Hi, hi, greetings. I was just looking at some of the foliage and the very cool and serene atmosphere here uh, with meteor and was just wondering, you know, how do we really interpret life uh, when there's such a freedom here? You know, they eat when they have to, the rain falls, the air, the wind, and life goes on. A branch breaks, one, re you know, regrow, it grows again. It's, people come, hit it, animals are jumping around, slithering across, I suppose I use the word slithering. I haven't seen a snake yet, but you know, slithering. But it's a very interesting environment. And it, it, it makes me think uh, about my own freedoms and how I would behave and how I will exist within an environment that really doesn't seem to have boundaries. But of course there are boundaries, the earth is one, the wind, each tree creates a boundary with the another because you know it, it, it's becoming what you call uh, forested. But do I live in that real context of freedom? We, we see the wind blow and the, the branches and the trees move to and fro. Uh, they hang down, they hang up. But do remember, what I like about this is that they are responsive to light. <laughs> and they usually grow in the, pa in the path of light, if that's what it is, for the synthesis. Uh, so that if you have a tree where there's a light, um, a lamp, or let, let's, uh, let's say a house outside light, or a lamp post, a street light, you find that that tree will gravitate towards that light and it, if it wouldn't bend towards the darkness. So it's again reflective of the fact that we are really experiencing because the light, and I speak about that light as a believer in Christ Jesus, being said that I am light as he is light and therefore my growth really is a reflection, a reflection of how I I work with him. It's important to note that <clears throat> God created all this and God created me. It is a vision like this. Bingo. But here it is that I seem to have a different dimension of operation. And I know that's because of the fall with Adam and Eve. But I'm also reflective of the fact that there is grace. And I, I live in that grace. I live in that context of a hey, what may happen that you may think negatively. I'm able to transition that into something positive, and to let you see that all things are working together for good. So I, I'm here thinking about life, and I'm thinking about how I can frame that in my in going forward. You know, there is this verse of scripture in. May, may I find it for you? Uh, in Luke 14. Uh, you know, <laughs> which talks about counting the cost. Uh, now, do we really count the cost of anything when, when we are doing something? Tell me, do you? This is not budgeting here, by the way. This is counting costs. This is seeing if I can really live up to all that is workable for me in my future. Uh, this passage talks about discipleship, but I, 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 I'm not going down that route. I just want to use that as a script. We'll see how it works out here. I, there, was a, there went a great multitude, Luke 14, 25, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come unto me and hate not his father, mother, and wife, and children, and brothers and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counted the cost, whether he be, we have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he had laid the foundation, he is not able to finish it. All that behold it begin to mock him. All that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted with he be able to whether he be able to with ten thousand to meet that which cometh against him with twenty thousand? So th there is this context of assessing in order to make sure that there's a completion or a victory. That you finish the tower or you, you win the war, uh, 
And so therefore, it's important for us to have a concept of how we are going to behave, but how are we going to use the implements, the elements, the dynamics around us to foster that kind of growth. So that brings me to the thought of looking before you leap. You know, because we are prone to do many things in our lives, but do we really sit down and plan? In speaking about family the last couple of weeks, I remember asking the question, do we sit and plan for the family? Now, there are people who sit and plan to have the family. But when we have the family, do we sit and plan for the family? Do we sit and decide how we are progressing? How we will progress? What it will take for us to achieve or to establish our way forward? Now, that's all well and good. And I, I applaud that if you do. But, and it is very important to note that somewhere in, in our lifetime, we, we, we tend to plan, but we plan basically, as I as always said, educationally. Or we talk about assets, about buying land or house. But do we plan for us as a person? <laughs> do we? You know, they're, 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 do we think about me as Kenneth and what Kenneth wants and how Kenneth is growing? I remember as a father, I, I, I planned outside of myself. It was all about the children. It was not so even about the wife, you know, it was the children. And you know, if I asked her, she would say the same thing. So we both never really invested strategically in the beginning of our marriage until we came to the point where we recognized, hey, we need to be a part of this growing process. The children are growing as we stand in one place. All we do is give instruction. No, we need to belong to them and give instruction with them. And so that changed the whole dynamic of how we began to grow in terms of achievements as we begin to think through things and establish proper characters. So, so it's important for us to begin to, to, to plot uh, forward in terms of how we are developing our own selves. Now, one of the things that when I mentioned, look before I leap, I am about to leap. I'm about to I have a great idea. I'm about to, you know, today everybody's an entrepreneur. Uh, I have a business. I have an idea. I want to make something. I want to sell something. I want to, and we, hey, but are we really looking out there to see where we're going? Or what it is we need to look for? Now, this might be a little controversial for you, or you might, you don't have to, agree, but I'm sharing this with you today. Yes. You might say, okay, I have to plan to make sure that all the dollars and cents are, are right. Left hand side, equal side, reimbursements, expenses, everything. I will see how I plan for the next three years, four years. There's a forecast. Fine. I may also look at the product without looking at finances and see that, okay, this product is viable. It's needed, people like it, people will want it. It's part of a daily uh, existence. People can't do without it daily or at least every two days. So yes, I can work that. I can look at the people I and begin to say, okay, I would market it or sell it in that particular area, not in this particular area. So there are different dynamics of where you want to look. But which one of those dynamics is going to really help us in terms of going forward? And what I am suggesting today is that we need to look in that mirror and tell ourselves, do we look at us? Do I look at me who has an idea, who want to go forward, who wants to establish tomorrow? Do I look at me? And that's where I think the looking before I leap is important. It's not that I look at the money or look at the product or look at the market or look at the extent of my profits. No, I have to look at me because I am the one who is leaping. Do I want to leap? Was I trained to leap? How far can I leap? What if I fall when I leap? There, there are many questions. There are many questions that assail us, uh, that come to our heads that 
will help us to begin to analyze the me. Now, why am I looking about me? Because, you see, as a being, in terms of where I've come from and, and, and where I am going, it's important to, to, to see the, the fact that I, I, I need to assess me from the very beginning. What about me that is so real about my tomorrow? When I look out there, as I said, there are different dynamics. And I can also look at dangers, the misfalls of what I'm about to do, the mishaps that I may in, in, encounter. But I must remember that the person who is now looking was not this age years ago. I started off at zero. I came through the infancy, childhood, early ch late childhood, teenager, early teenager, late teenager, young adult, adult. I have been progressing. And in doing that, I would have taken up so many, acts, and I use what I call say, so many pivotal issues, so many pivotal experiences <clears throat> that now makes me who I am. So therefore, my mind, <coughs> excuse me, my mind is not just about where I'm going. Really, it has to be who's taking me forward. How do I take myself to the next level? I have grown with wisdom. I have grown with knowledge. I have grown tall. I have grown wiser. I have grown with people. And every time I grow with people, I have had the experiences of having to interpret different personalities, different behaviors, different feelings, all kinds of differences in terms of how I must behave. So you realize I'm coming down to that word behave. But before I get to the behave part, I have thoughts. I think, would it be liked, as I said, with, with that issue of uh, what my product would be? Would it be liked? Would I have to change it tomorrow if it's not liked? Am I ready for that? Uh, am I ready to, to really see how big this thing is? Am I going to be overwhelmed? Who is dictating this thing? Who's, who owns this product? Who owns this plan? Who owns this future? I am. Nobody could tell me anything about this thing. I am in charge. And, and, and so it, it is something to know that I can become very individualistic. I could become very self-opinionated about a product or a plan that is going forward for somebody else. So therefore, I have to be careful that I am ready to release this, honestly release this, to capture an audience that is so real in its variations and in differences, and of course in the dynamics that it presents. I have to work it out. Let me, let me bring something else to your attention here. It's how am I today? How do I feel today? And, and how do you know when I get up and, and I want to uh, prepare X? Or, or I want to make sure that Y is done? <clears throat> how, how do I work when somebody tells me you're going too fast? You're not making money. And how am I to behave when people think that I am not proactive enough. You see, there are so many thoughts out there, but what about my thoughts? How do I readily exemplify, modify, classify my thoughts as real? As a matter of fact, who really cares that I'm doing this thing? So, but who wants us to be selfish? So, one of the things that is important here is about where we have come from. How do I interpret my socialization? How do I interpret how Granny and Daddy has taught me, especially about money, about planning, uh, about diversity? How do I in interpret those dynamics? It, it, is a, it is very important for me to appreciate that m Granny, parents, neighbor, teachers, peers, friends, all of these people informed my feelings through traditions, through cultures, and of course with expectations. So here am I wanting to make jams. Where are getting the fruit from? Where are getting the sugar from? Where are getting the jams from? As a matter of fact, who will buy the jams? Now, who will buy the jams, as I said before, is not my problem, you know. 
I have to be assured that I have a particular behavior towards my thinking about me having the community and working the jams. But Granny said, Mommy said, Daddy said, Neighbor said, You know, may I take a little break here? And I'm happy to unbreak this, by the way. How do I really overcome? Every time I have a plan, somebody has a negative thing to say. I have never been encouraged. So why am I here talking about this? I, I, you, do you really want to hear me? You might say, here you go again, he's not encouraging me. Wait, 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 wait. I'm encouraging you. But that's one of the things that I think is important for us to look at in the eye. When we identify with the eye, and we think of granny and auntie and uncle and all these people and all the neighbors, we, we will always remember there's somebody there who did not encourage us to be somebody, who did not encourage us to see me on our nose, to see me on our feet, to see me on our wall. You could never do it. You, look where you're going. You remember your auntie? Your auntie tried that, you know. You know, your cousin tried that. You remember the neighbor tried that? It doesn't work. We, we are never allowed to be successful out of ourselves. Our success is always planned or rather envisaged or forecasted because of somebody's failure. So because somebody failed, I have no success. Because auntie failed, my success gone. So every time I want to do something, I have to find out who succeeded. It is not relevant for me to find who succeeded. I must know that I can succeed. I must come into that emotional frame where my thoughts are able to align with my capacity to do. Therefore, I must also look at the word passion and see myself going forward with that passion to inculcate that kind of concept that brings the reality of a product. So here am I making my jams. I have to start making my jams because I can make jams because I feel, know in my heart that people will buy this jam and I know this jam is going to be good. Oh, somebody tastes it and say, hmm, it's not so good. Oh, maybe a, a little too much of some, that's fine, but that does not say that the critique is negative enough to make me stop. The critique might help me enhance. Can I see that kind of wisdom and kind of interrelating, that kind of conversation that pushes me forward rather than puts me in a no-go position? I am stuck where I stand. I'm actually talking here about emotional intelligence. Would you believe that? <laughs> How it starts with me and my socialization. How it starts with me and the reflectives of how I was not encouraged here or there. And furthermore, I may have struggled with the fact that I need to be better at math. I may have need to be better at football. Or I didn't do my English well. Or I may need to be better cleaning my room. So when I look around my life and I see all these infractions, or let me call them that, all these situations that I never seem to fulfill. I, I heard about how I could make a bed up. I heard of my shit was dirty. I, I, I heard that I couldn't do the school work. I, my goodness, is there anything I can do positively? <laughs> yes, you can. So that we have to bring you into a place where your emotion speaks for your tomorrow. That is, when you are completely assured with the passion of productivity, the passion of progression, how do I put that into a vein where I can accomplish an activity for success? There are people out there who have great ideas, and you may have one of those too, but you have not done anything with that idea. Be not because you don't have the capacity, because there is so much reaction to past sayings, past re reactions, past responses that didn't identify with success. I have to begin to make success my own. I have to own it. I have to believe it. 
I have to deliver it. Am I going to continue to want those traditions, those cultures, to flag me negatively? Is it that I want to make sure that I don't want to end up like them? Or I don't want somebody to say, I told you so? Gentlemen, gentle ladies, children, aunties, whoever's listening, whoever's looking at me right now, you are your success indicator. You make it work. You decide from within. Not looking at, and this is where we can put that blindfold. This is not about being selfish or individualistic. This is about bringing out an individual that is tenacious and active about going forward. This is an individual that presents itself, himself, herself. And it here is presenting the capacity, the, 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 that, that, that individuality as a maker, as a creator to do. You know, some of us don't realize that we tie our shoelaces. I love to use that. That's a work of art. <laughs> Have you ever seen shoelaces? <laughs> Everybody has a way of starting differently and finishing. They almost look alike. It always has two loops on either side of the shoe, the, two fro the top of the, the tongue, and two extra strands. So whatever the art of either putting two together, or putting one around, in, oh, there's so, so many ways. You know, we tie our laces, and we get enough support from those tight laces for the shoe to take us comfortably as we walk. I'm suggesting to you today that you may find people wanting to suggest how you could do your thing, why you should do your thing. But in the event, it is you who are tying your shoelaces. Forget your foot in a comfortable shoe that takes you from point A onwards. Let's see if we could start off this with the series and I will continue in our next broadcast how to develop the me and how to have that emotional control that brings me into that success without somebody planning it for me it must start with me it must start with you so until next broadcast this is Dr. Kenneth Nash saying to you be productive starting to look in the mirror and says hey I can I will I can I must, I can, I am. Have a good day.